Okay, and the previous lesson we had blasted the cube into the cylinder and then reset it each time. But instead of this time, let's say I want to do something with the cylinder as well. Well, we know the cylinder has associated with its own code from over in here. We had set up the cylinder object as code like that, and it's and that's getting executed all the time. And the only thing that really is being executed is checking for the keyboard event. But let's say I want to do everything within this cube object scene right in here. I want to, let's say, reposition the cylinder instead of just the cube itself. So in order to get this thing called yellow cylinder, I had to come up here, and here's the command right here. These are really important. So I define yellow cylinder to be equal to scene.objects, and then in square brackets, the name of the object, which is cylinder, like that. All right. So once I do that, as simple as that, then I have it in this form, yellow cylinder versus in here these were called cube objects because that is the name of the controller owner so by default you have access to the one object in the scene that's associated with the code this cube object and then all the other objects if you want to have access to them that are in the scene you can get through this here scene.objects command like that so but you'll notice if I run this code like this it's not going to work if I press the right arrow key nothing's happening like that and the reason is because it's called scene.objects and in order then we're going to have to come up here and we're going to have to take out that comment that we did in before so we need the scene in here which is basically defining it to be equal to this so I could have just put all this in front of that instead I'm just defining it to be the word scene and then now when I run it what am I doing I'm coming down here and I'm just repositioning the local with the position of the Y or the Y position of the cylinder so let's make that maybe negative 3 further back in the scene like that and see what happens alright so I press P now it should hit it and it does and then when the cube gets to negative 50 it should reset the cube like before and it resets the cylinder but I can see the cylinder drop down below the surface so it's not going to come back so that's the same as the previous location so now we'll just grab this one and take the Z value and let's see if we can put that at 1. Alright, now let's run this. So it hits it and there it comes back into the scene. So oh, it's rolling out of the way. Maybe it'll roll back into the middle of it, but it looks like it's going to try and roll out of the way. So maybe the cube's not going to hit it again, but if we just let it run over and over again, it might, it might roll back in the scene until it gets off that edge and then we're all in trouble. All right, so that's not going to fly. All right, so let's just do it. Let's do it also in X. Let's see if that'll work. <coughs> Dot X is zero. And then maybe it'll just run over and over again. Ah, but they have essentially the same amount of force. Well, not completely, because the cube hit the one, so it might not be able to catch up with the other one. Uh, I see. So, well, that'd be an issue of having to reapply the force, because we can see they're both slowing down each and every time. They may have not even make it this last time around. Well, there they are. All right, well, I think that gives you the idea. It's just an easy way to grab any object with the, within the scene, and then you can do all kinds of things with it. All right, well, that's it for this lesson, and I'll see you in the next lesson.